So John Walker says, I am Captain America quite a few times in this episode. And every time he does it, I just think of that scene in Game of Thrones. I am the king. I will punish you. Any man who must say I am the king is no true king. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing if you want to see more videos from me and please like this video if you enjoy it. So I'm going to say something that is probably going to ruffle quite a few feathers, but you know what, this is my channel and I'm just going to say it anyway. I think they did John Walker dirty. I think they just really were unfair to him in this episode. Don't get me wrong, I really do not like his character. I think he's somebody in real life who I would avoid as a person. I just don't like people like that who were so full of themselves. But still, we are emotionally connected to Sam and Bucky. But think of it this way, if you just think of it logically, not as characters that you're attached to. Okay, John Walker, what he did was wrong. I'm not saying that it wasn't wrong, he shouldn't have killed somebody, but... At the same time, the Avengers, they are full of people who have done horrible things in the past. You know, Wanda, Black Widow, a lot of them have been reformed. And, you know, John Walker before this, he wasn't a bad guy. He was an army hero. So I think they could have cut him a little bit of slack. And I just think, you know, Carly's group, they are terrorists. They may be sympathetic terrorists. They may have a sob story, which is horrible. Like, really, it's you feel sorry for them. But at the same time, you can't just go around bombing people because you've had a hard life, you know? So I just think they're trying to make it seem like it's black and white, but it's really not. And anyway, so we see that there is a lady in this episode who is quite mysterious. We don't know a lot about her, but she's played by Julia Louise Dreyfus, who plays Elaine on Seinfeld. So Seinfeld is basically the best sitcom that has ever existed. And if you haven't seen it, you should see it. So I don't know who her character is. Obviously, she's somebody who has an interest in super soldiers, who is trying to hire John Walker to do something that is probably really shady. So we say goodbye to everybody's favourite Zemo in this episode. So I hope that Zemo eventually finds his way back into the last episode because I really enjoyed his character. So we see a scene where Bucky plays Russian roulette with him, which is a bit of a jerk move for Bucky to do, especially after he helped him. But anyway, so we see Zemo get taken away by the Wakandans. Is that what you call people from Wakanda? Wakandans? I don't know, but that's what I'm doing anyway. So the Wakandans take him away to live out his days in Wakanda. And look, this episode, don't get me wrong, I think that you can absolutely use TV shows and movies to reflect modern day politics and you can do it really well but in this show especially this episode it felt like it was getting a little bit heavy-handed and I just want to focus on the entertainment and not be preached to you know what I'm saying like obviously these issues are important don't take me the wrong way but I just want my superhero entertainment to be superhero entertainment anyway so I think they spent a little bit too long on the whole issue of Sam and his storyline with the community coming around him to help him build his boat. And don't get me wrong, it was interesting and it was a good storyline, but it just felt like, okay, we only have one episode left to wrap everything up. They're just spending too much on this side storyline instead of the main storyline. So we see a pretty cool training montage towards the end where Sam is practicing with the shield and the shield kept flying at his head and he would duck and he's obviously practicing so he doesn't get decapitated but it made me a little nervous to watch it even though I know they're not going to kill him off. But anyway, we see Carly and the Flag Smashers and they've infiltrated the highest levels of government 
So Carly is hiring this new guy, recruiting him for the Flag Smashers. And the other Flag Smasher guy that was with her says, you know this guy's a criminal, right? And she replies, I don't care, basically. We're criminals as well at this point. And it's like she's finally admitted to herself that to do what she wants to do, she's going to have to cross some pretty morally grey lines. Well, not just grey, full on black. She's going to have to become... Like, there's this saying, I forget who says it, but if you want to chase a monster, you have to become a monster. And it's like that, you know, she knows that to do what she wants to do for her people, she's going to have to become a little bit dark herself. Anyway, so to demonstrate her power to this new recruit, she has all these people in the park that she's in and she sends them a message and they all just get up. And it sort of reminds me of that scene in John Wick Chapter 3 where basically every single person in New York City is an assassin. And yeah, that scene was completely completely over the top. But still, this scene just sort of reminded me of that and how Carly has that power, how she has people everywhere. So this was an interesting episode in some ways, but in other ways I found it pretty boring. I wish I'd focused more on the main storyline. So yeah, we've only got one more episode to wrap up everything and it seems a bit hard to believe that we're going to wrap up everything in that episode, but yeah, we'll see. And soon we have Loki coming to Disney+, Plus, which I am really excited about because he is my favourite Marvel character. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of this episode and please help me out and subscribe. Thanks guys.